Hello, my name's Kevin and welcome to Love Canter's channel. So today I'm going to do a bit of ooh, time traveling. That's a great visual effect I'm doing there. Um, no, not really. I'm going to have a look in this book, which is Antiques and Their Values, Glass. And it's from 1976, which was a completely different era in glass collecting. Um, going through it, I've only found one Art Deco piece of glass. Everything's older, there's virtually nothing that's pre-war. Um, there's, there's no post-war stuff, you know. Uh, white fries were still making bark vases. Uh, Costa Boda uh, had only been an amalgamation of Costa and Boda for two years. So yeah, it, it's all that mid-century stuff. No, forget it wasn't a thing it was new it was new glass and um yeah it's a very different um it's that sometimes people might have heard me say crusty old git glass and my collecting is kind of like on the back of that era so i started collecting in 1991 i think and um yeah it was i was collecting old stuff that what I could find that I thought was old. I had no idea what I was doing really. And if I was collecting white fryers, it was um, the pre-war stuff, the trail vases and the um, ribbed um, wave pattern jugs. Thing, I mean, um, vases and stuff like that. I did buy some, some Baxter stuff, very cheap, very cheap. Uh, my wife hated it, so I gave it to my sister, and she has her own little collection of stuff that's probably done very well. Whereas this glass has not done so great. So what I'm going to do, I've photographed a few pages out of it. I'm going to go through, and I've tried to work out what what inflation will have done since 1976 and i've had a few different answers so i'm going to go with it multiplies the price of everything by eight okay so if you see something that's 10 pounds it would be 80 pounds today so yeah it's going to be interesting because also there's some stuff in here that's not identified correctly and i can point out some of that and i think if they'd known at the time they may have changed the values at the time and some of the really top end stuff we'll look at a couple of those bits of that um, have actually done okay so let's get on and have a look at a few pictures well, that I've taken from the book and, um, and we'll look at prices and things for, for things and see how they've gone but remember no mid-century no Baxter's glass none of that stuff just doesn't it just it wasn't a thing people weren't collecting it's um you know it wasn't even vintage it was new so remember that i'm going to start with um dwarf ale glasses and in particular this one here the date is interesting they've got 1860 it's going to be earlier than that so the latest catalog example I've got for these is from the 1840s, but they they, they go back much earlier. Um, they've also got this one with hops and barley on, which they're saying is late 18th century. So this one is nine pounds and this one is 12 pounds. So we're looking about 70 quid, I think that one. And um, about 90 pounds for that one. So let's just see where we go with this anyway. I, my maths is terrible, so I'm doing it on the fly, so forget that anyway. But we, we got an idea, um, you know, eight times that and uh, eight times that as well. So anyway, I can't see what I'm doing here. Here we go. So this is a sold page for the UK. Um, and this dwarf ale glass, he's got 1780. I think that might be ambitious. Sold it for £47.50. So, yeah, it's still 
Still haven't made good money on it. This one was £32, this one was £39. Um, but there's a, there's a Hobson L one there for £16. So, well, by the time you've got it home, it's 20 quid. That's cheap. That is cheap, actually. So I've got a bargain there. I've uh, got a pair of rather ones. So that's cheap as well. Um, but you're getting an idea of what these things are selling. You know, there's a bit of a mix of prices. So that one went cheap. Oh, it's AF. So that's got a chip or something. So that doesn't count. But yeah, you get the idea of what they're going for. Um, they've basically lost half their value in the... Um, that's actually a jelly glass. That's not a dwarf ale glass. So yeah, they've lost half their value in the last 48 years. Sad, but true. Anyway, let's move on, have a look at another page. So here's the next page we're looking at. And yes, this is the item we're looking at. Now, Bristol finger bowl marked I Jacobs Bristol, 150 pounds. So this is Bristol blue. This is a historic piece because it's actually the piece that that decided that blue, that color, dark, dark blue would be Bristol. Okay, because it had the word Bristol written on it. Now, you won't find one of these on eBay, at least it's very unlikely, but 10 years ago, I did. Okay, so here is my bowl from eBay. Um, it's very lovely. Underneath, let me show you, show you this. Yeah, signed as well. I Jacobs, just like the one in there. I paid about a hundred pounds for it plus postage. So a hundred and fifty pounds. Now either I absolutely robbed this, but they were very clear about what it was. You know, just nobody else bid on it. So, and it became mine. So, there was no interest. And, and hence, it became mine. So, it was £150. Multiply that by eight, gives you £1,200. So, yeah, that's, that's a huge chunk off. Um me being able to buy it for a hundred pounds what's really a, a museum quality piece so yeah um i'm very happy with that piece um unlikely to ever see it again anywhere that's buyable so yeah but anyway it does show you i i suspect there isn't massive interest at least not on ebay anyway So this is the next page we're looking at. Now I have a current job probably as nice as this one that I bought from an antique center for 38 pounds. So I think mine's a more 1830s, but yeah, I think it's as good as this one. But the thing we're looking at is this here. Um, Victorian clear glass claret jug with plated mount. So I know that I recognize this design. This is a Christopher Dresser design, 30 pounds. Okay, so I have one of these. So we don't need to, um, where am I going? Going here, yes, here it is. Mine has got quilted glass, so it's still, still the same fittings here. Um, got a reference for it. And I bought this from an antique center. Uh, when did I buy it? When did I buy it? About 10, 12 years ago, maybe 12 years, I think, maybe. And I paid £40 for it in an antique center. So I think that was a bargain. Usually they're a bit more than that. Um, but I don't think that they've, they've gone up in value at all. So yeah, there's, there's no money to be, you know, £30 then to um, 40 pounds now um, you, you might have to pay 60 pounds for one maybe I think would be a fair price now but um, yeah it's there's no you know so you go double the price as opposed to eight times the price so 
Yeah, still no big gains on that one. In fact, massive losses if you take inflation into account. I'm not going to show you any references for them, but I'm going to talk about this one here that's six pounds. Now, this is not the right stopper for it. Um, I'm pretty certain. It's difficult to tell because it's obviously a thing, but I don't think it is. Six pounds. I think it's probably worth about six pounds if it has the wrong stopper. But even then, this style of it's a bludgeon decanter, 1845 to 65. They don't make very good money. Um, 12 pounds to 20 pounds, maybe. So, yeah, not a good price rise. This one here might make 30 pounds. It's a bit more elegant shape, but this rather clunky looking one, yeah, no, not no good price rises. So even this, even this more elegant one, although, yeah, the price has gone up a little bit. It's still inflation just wipes that out. Uh, there's no extra value in that one either. So on this page, the one we're going to look at is this decanter here for £34. Early 19th century cut dust decanter. This style of decanter is, um, yeah, 1820s or 30s. It's got a triple ring. If Get close, you can see it's got three rings. Um, now, it just so happens that I've just come back from Norfolk where I bought some glass. I did a video on it, and one of them I bought was this, which is in the same stable. Um, it even has uh, slanted blazes around the base, like the one we're just looking at in the picture. Slightly different patterns here and everything, but yeah. This is the same kind of thing. And I bought this for £20 in an antique shop that specializes in older glass. So yeah, that's how much those are worth now. So um, I do know where there's another one I could buy if I wanted one um, that's very near me and it's £28. So yeah, people are not interested in decanters, not interested in early 19th century ones, even though it's near enough 200 years old it's not not a thing people are collecting or or want to have on their table with a whiskey in it because you this is probably one of the earliest ones you can use and go yeah this is a practical decanter i keep my whiskey out and have a tot out of it but i don't think maybe people are just not drink well people don't drink like that anymore so yeah there are bargains to be had if you are looking for these relatively or just to have something nice on your table, you can have something really nice, classy, 200 years old, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, something like that, cheaper than it was in 1976. I'm gonna show you a couple of pieces on this page, okay? I'm not gonna show you references for them, I'm just gonna talk about them a little bit. This one here, I actually recognize this, uh, I think this is um, James Giles. So it was actually, although they said Bristol opaque, is actually made in London. There's no such thing as Bristol white. They've also got 800 guineas on it, which is a pound and a shilling. It's an old fashioned way of pricing things. Um, but yeah, so if this is a James Giles decanter, which I think it is, um, you're probably talking yeah, you've made your money on that, I think. I suspect it is £8,000, maybe more. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I just know stratospheric prices, okay? And the same for this here, Raven's Head Decanter Jug, 1685 £1,000. Yeah, that's easily 10 20 Who knows? They're just whoosh it's the kind of thing you need to go to the victorian albert museum to see it's just a, the beginning of lead crystal glass in the world so yeah i mean that's 1865 is the year lead crystal was supposed to be invented so yeah real historic pieces these are really proper historic pieces that are thousands and you 
if you'd bought them then at these prices, chances are you'd have actually, even with inflation, you'd have made some money on them. Okay, so the one we're looking at here is this Mary Gregory jug. I mean, I don't think you're going to make any money on like these ones here. You might even get less for them today. Um, but uh, yeah, this one, £24. Used to be collectible. People used to go after Mary Gregory stuff. Um, and you have to remember it has to be eight times that. So it should be nearly coming up to £200. And if you go to eBay, there's one Mary Gregory jug that's sold. Fifty pounds by it now. It's not like that one. There are, you know, there's hardly any Mary Gregory stuff sold. You know, it's, it's basically this little white enameled children and ladies and girls and stuff. Um, some of them are coloured like that one. And you know that little beaker there. If I go non-sold items, you'll see some others. Twenty pounds for that. You know that. Prices are just not there really. Um, so if you bought one of those, you'd have made you'd have made a big loss. Um, so anyway, so that's Mary Gregory stuff. Used to be collectible. Nobody's very interested anymore. So here we are, another page. This is the jug we're interested in. We've got thirty nine pounds. Old flute, cut, blah blah blah. I think so. They've got 1840 on it. I think that's about right. This looks like it's a rib bolted one. I don't know what they're saying there, but anyway, I'll show you something I have which I think it's like. It's this one here. Um, mine's 1850 plus because it's frosted, and that's when that came in. But yeah, I paid like 20 pounds for that. And if you look at these ones, this is what I'm paying. Yes, I I am stalking. Yeah, no, I've got I've got more of this type of jug. And yeah, I am stalking eBay and picking out the bargains, but probably 40 pounds is a toppy price for those. Um, and yeah, 50 pounds maybe but because nobody's interested in mid 19th century jugs. And that is the, the fact of it. Nobody's going around collecting them. I think they're lovely. I love, love the way the handles swoop down. Um, the ones, the later ones where the handle like this. Yeah, this is a lovely jug, but the handle's not so elegant as it when it's done like this. Anyway, um, yeah, there's no bargains in those either. This is what we're looking at here. Um, what are the pair of Irish? Blah, 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 Twenty-five pounds for a pair. One of a pair of Irish, forty pounds. So really, that's like in today's money, that's two hundred pounds. I think that's three hundred and twenty pounds. So um, and so I have. If I go on my so if you say that probably then a singles worth about in today's money should be um 80 80 pounds maybe 100 pounds for one of those you know because you've got to take out the fact that they're pairs okay but yeah that may if you look at my collection so this is what i have And this isn't all of the ones I've got. I've got quite a few more. Um, I could have pulled out of them. I bored the life out of you. But anyway, I'm usually, in fact, I bought two in Norfolk and I paid about 20 pounds. I think one was 20, one was 22 pounds. So that's the price of them now, really. Um, in fact, I bought, sometimes people are asking up to 35 pounds for a single one. But yeah, when you compare it with this price for a pair, it's it's still you know it's still a quarter of what it should be. 
So I thought I'd share the um, modern piece in there, which is this. They've just called it a modernist cocktail service, considering blah, blah, blah. So this is Czech, I think. It might be German, but I think it's Czech, made by Karl Palder. Um, yeah, other people were making these kinds of things, so, but I think it's that. And um, yeah, so if we go to eBay, I put in Karl Palder and look for something, 75 pounds it was back then. That one's two, so that's only with three glasses. We want one with six. There's one with six. That's probably nice. That's two hundred and forty pounds. So it's still, yeah, you're not losing so much. That was a bargain. That's one hundred and seventy-five pounds. That's quite nice. Um, I think that's it on the sold. So these are sold prices, but even then, it was seventy-five pounds back then and you've not made um, yeah I think I think that was a bit of a bargain price um, this one here because it is all six and it's very stylish in fact yeah I think I think they are underpriced some of the art deco stuff and I think they're probably going out of fashion but anyway uh, that's the the last bit I'm going to show you out of that book just to show you yeah, you're not in this for profit unless you're flipping things over and buying them very cheap and flipping them and selling them straight away. Um, Long-term profit doesn't look like it's there, does it? So there you go. Traveling back to 1976. Mm, not that genius, is it? So, if you're going to collect glass what you've got to try and, and, and say, oh, it's a long-term investment. Mm, yes. The glass you need to collect, probably, if you're going to say, I'm going to keep this for 30, 40 years, would be the stuff that's kind of like nearly new stuff. Um, like the stuff that looks like it's coming up at the moment is Medina, because it's actually a bit newer than the Baxter stuff. Do you know what I mean? It, it, when I started collecting, I should have been, you know, I was walking, I remember, where was I? Peterborough Antiques Fair. Yeah. And um, I remember walking along and I saw three drunken bricklayers uh, on top shelf of someone's stall. And they were £22 each. And I was thinking, oh, that looks a lot. Because I'm like I bought a totem for my sister for three quid. The Bart vases I was buying for all for a way under a tenner, you know. Um, so £22 looked a, a lot to me. I think I also bought a TV vase and a sunburst for £7 each. So £22, £22. When, if I knew what I knew then, or, or knew then what I know now, I'd have bought every bit of Bax's white, <laughs> the, the white fries I could find for whatever it was going for at that time. Because, yeah, there's a bit of profit in that now. Um, yeah, three, all lined up in different colours. Um, yeah. You know, stuff. I was thinking, oh, should I buy those? Because they look quite cool. But my wife was like, no, no, no. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're £22 anyway, so walk by anyway yeah that's how it is so um i'll give you the description for the book in case you want to try and find your own um and uh yeah on that depressing note um thank you for watching please remember to like and subscribe and uh, have a good night good night